Devil Fruit users are complex individuals, saddled with profound powers and crazy curses. And most users wield these powers quite well, although some of them are simply beyond terrible. So which of your favorite characters are going to be declared the worst Devil Fruit users in the entire series? Well, let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today it is time to examine the vast pits of mediocrity in the series as we embark on a grand journey to discover the worst Devil Fruit user in existence, as well as 19 of their closest friends. Although we do run into a mild problem almost immediately, because aside from personal opinion, how are we supposed to definitively determine who is the very vaguely defined worst Devil Fruit user in One Piece? Well, science, that's how. Marvelous, delicious, mmm, science. As such, I have gone through all 141 canon Devil Fruit users in the series, assigned them scores based on segments of criteria that I will explain shortly, and then pressed a button in Microsoft Excel that sorts all of these results from lowest to highest, thus illuminating our greatly disappointing performers. And just while we're here, please do alleviate some degree of the madness I've incurred making this list by subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Because you have no idea just how thoroughly I've thought about fictional fruit for your benefit, yes you, but I do hope that you enjoy the results and please do comment down below if you're a new member of the Grand Fleet. Now, if you would like to skip straight to the list, then you can go to this time, but I would recommend you stay for an explanation of the methodology, otherwise the results may be confusing to your brain thing. And for those who don't care, may I suggest you stay anyway, and I shall direct your attention to these suggestive images of Boa Hancock playing on loop in the bottom corner here. So you just keep your attention there whilst I speak to the adult members of the Grand Fleet. Essentially though, every Devil Fruit user in the series was put through a rigorous grading system based on four categories. The first of which was usage. This encompasses how a user has chosen to apply their abilities. For example, if we were talking about Mr. One, then we'd be analyzing this category based on how well it assists him in being an assassin. Meanwhile, if we were examining Stroyson, then we'd be looking at how well it assists him in being a chef. Easy. Next up, we have creativity, which investigates how well a user thinks outside the box with their powers. Meanwhile, we also have intelligence, which aims to discover how well an individual implements their fruit in any given situation. What's the difference between these two categories, you ask? Well, Foxy is a very creative devil fruit user. However, that creativity is absolutely wasted because he lacks the intelligence to implement it effectively. Meanwhile, someone like NL is actually surprisingly intelligent, but not particularly creative and relies heavily on the very basics of his power. The gap between creativity and and intelligence is vast. And finally, we have mastery, and this is probably not going to be a phenomenally performing category for this particular video, but it aims to discern how well a user has exhausted and reached the true potential of their fruit. For example, an awakened Devil Fruit user would automatically receive a perfect score in mastery, but uh, we won't be seeing very high scores for this area in this video, oh my no. But each of these categories were assigned a score out of 10, which were then added together to make a score out of 40, and then via very basic mathematics, it was magically transformed into a total out of 100 in order to give us a better perception of fruit rankage. Because saying that a user scored 45 out of 100 is much more straightforward than saying they received 18 out of 40. Oh, and there were some exceptions that needed to be made here as well. Firstly, artificial devil fruit users were not considered. Otherwise, this list would just be full of 20 smile users. Secondly, I did also make the decision to omit all of the object fruit users like Lasso, Funk Freed, and Bumbuku. I just don't think it would have been quite fair to examine them as fruit users because they are quite literally objects and thus should not be held to the same standards as conscious beings. But with all of that out of the way, let's commence our very disappointing journey with number 20, Luno. This cow man has always kind of frustrated me a bit because his ability, the Doa Doa no Mi, is quite frankly phenomenal and it is in entirely the wrong hands. As a Cypher Pole agent, yes, it's very useful for covert ops and stuff, but it doesn't mix very well with Luno's style of combat, which is probably best described as a brawling bull. And as such, this fruit is almost entirely misused by him. Meanwhile, he is barely above average in creativity as well as intelligence, but there is absurd levels of room for improvement with both of them. And as for mastery, well, there's very little of that to speak of because Bluno has yet to really begin pushing the limits of what the Doa Doa no Mi can do because he is a silly, silly cow man. To number 19, now we encounter our resident nose picker, Gem, AKA Mr. Five. And this is just a grand waste of a fruit with this user. To think that you have the power to turn any part of your body into a bomb and what you decide to do with 99% of your time is 
pick your nose. It's a funny gag and it's very One Piece, but whoa, what a waste. Which is only highlighted by Jem himself because he does have some legitimately great uses like using his breath as exploding bullets. That's pretty fantastic. But there is just so much more potential to explore here, leaving Jem in a very average position. He's an underachiever with potential. However, just like you in high school, he's too busy picking his nose to realize said potential. Sticking with the Baroque works theme now, we have number eight, Droffy, better known as Miss Merry Christmas. And speaking of average, she scored a perfect, or I guess I should say imperfect 50, because whether the glass is half empty or half full, you are still missing 50% of your potential delicious liquid. And it's a hot day, I want to drink. And Droffy ain't doing it for me. It's actually really difficult to convey just how plain of a fruit user she is. Middling scores for literally every category, because while you can't consider her a failure in any way, there's also nothing particularly at all interesting to work with either. She uses the abilities in a very vanilla, straight out of the box method, not even bothering to read the advanced instructions. And you could say very similar things about our number 17th place, Kinemon. Although he does have a bit of an excuse here, being that he still doesn't even realize that he himself is a devil fruit user. He once ate a quote, strange fruit, and now believes that he is bestowed with some sort of gifted ninjutsu or otherwise sorcery. Although it is a bit weird because it doesn't keep up with the devil fruit continuity of, you know, learning the name of the fruit after consuming it, but we'll put all of that aside for now. Kinemon's greatest flaw is always going to be intelligence and overall mastery. However, what keeps him afloat here is sheer creativity. After the events of Wano, Kinemon should pursue a career as a fashion designer because for someone who has almost no experience of the outside world, his apparel-based imagination knows no bounds. And he does use the fruit in a slightly above average manner, so here we are with another glass half full entry. Full is a word that we won't be using from here on out though, unless it refers to Buffullo, who is our 16th place finisher with a total score of 47.5 out of 100. A very mediocre. Starting with his only decent point, the Guru Guru no Mi is actually used quite decently in service to the Don Quixote family. It's wonderfully convenient and quite deadly in combination specifically with Baby Five. The problem is that Buffalo himself does not know how to make the best use of his fruit in well, any way. His intelligence is, look, it's Buffalo. His creativity seems to lessen with every subsequent appearance and his mastery is, I, I, I can't see it, I can't touch it because it's not there. Buffalo is an effective fruit user under one circumstance and one circumstance alone, which is when he is told to do something by someone much more smarter than he. And with that in mind, he actually still ranks kind of shockingly highly. I mean, 16th place, uh, Who could have done worse than Buffalo? Bellamy. That's who. The Don Quixote theme will continue here with Mr. Spring himself. He's received the same score as Buffalo, but for different areas. Once again, I suppose Bellamy is a man of honestly limited intelligence and even more limited creativity. He has one strategy when it comes to the Bane Bane no Mi, which is effective on a very basic level, generally serving his purposes, hence a six in usage. And post time skip, he has gotten a lot better, but he's still just pretty meh, which is kind of wild because this fruit holds very similar levels of potential to that of Luffy's. Bellamy is just stuck in this perpetual place of pure failure. And at the very least, Buffalo does have someone to tell him how to use his fruit. However, Bellamy is just kind of floundering on his own. However, in his defense, he does have some pretty damn cool shades. But onwards to a very unique contender now, we have former head warden of Impel Down Magellan. This may be a bit difficult to grasp at first because the use of the Doku Doku no Mi in this role is near perfect. Magellan's creativity is also pretty wild. It's a definite treat to see what he comes up with. And Magellan's mastery is strong enough to control even the most minute aspects of his poison and even evolve it into some sort of terrifying final form. So why is he here? This isn't the best Devil Fruit users. This is the worst. This is these are the shit guys. Well, that's because Magellan is quite literally a shit guy. He is a very rare special case and the only character out of all 141 candidates that I had to award negative points to. And this is because Magellan makes use of his fruit to eat foreign poisons. And while these poisons do not kill him, it does have the effect of giving him severe diarrhea, which incapacitates him for 10 hours each day, every day, all day, confining our poison man to a toilety prison within a prison. It is without a doubt the single worst use of a devil fruit in the entire series because Magellan is actively harming himself, his lifestyle, and even his career. All because he likes the taste of poison. As a result though, Magellan gets slapped with a whopping minus 10 points because holy crap, what a terrible way to use a fruit. And insanely enough, even with those negative marks, he still remains merely in 14th place. Big news happening in number 13 as we find ourselves a big old bird. Morgans is the user of the Tori Tori no Mi model Albatross and the one good feature we can award him is intelligence. 
how fluffy and used mogul is a very calculating man. Outside of that, Morgan's use of the fruit is very, uh, it's very surface level. It doesn't appear to be used in any way other than to maintain aesthetics, but the real kicker here is mastery because the problem is that Morgan's cannot even perform the very basics of an albatross or any, any other bird for that matter, which is flight. For some reason, he just can't do it, which is very poor form for a non-flightless birdman. But delving ever deeper into the tunnel of disappointment, we land on Mansherry, an unfortunate contender because her devil fruit, the Chiyuchi Unami, also ended up on the worst devil fruits list. But with that in mind, Mansherry's usage, for what it's worth, is kind of very good. As a clueless member of the Tontata tribe, however, intelligence takes a massive, massive hit. Mastery is, uh, it's average, because Mansherry does perform the intended function of the fruit, but nothing more, along with a less than creative methodology of implementation. But at the very least, I will grant that this fruit had minimal potential to begin with. The same cannot be said for our number 11 contender, Caribou, who is blessed with a Logia type devil fruit. It may be a filthy, filthy swamp, but it's still a Logia. And this long tongued, greasy haired barrel dweller is quite pathetic at making the most or even making the average of this Logia fruit. In regards to intelligence, mastery and creativity, these areas are more or less bankrupt. All of which are in great debt to the one decent category of usage, because if you are going to be a lazy Logia user, then applying that to really small scale piracy is not the worst way you could squander your power. But with a truly competent user, the Numa Numa Numi could be shockingly powerful and infinitely useful. However, with Caribou, it is neither. Breaking into the disastrous top 10 now, we meet Absalom, who possessed the pretty incredible and almost infinitely useful power of the Suke Suke Numi, allowing him to turn invisible. And Absalom then went on to basically use it to become the protagonist of his own era manga series. Except, you know, in real life. So he basically became a sexual predator. I don't know, what, what else do you want me to say? And I just, I really cannot emphasize what a waste of an ability this is. And even when Absalom did apply it to other things like say combat, that usage was just so mediocre as well. The only good thing he did eventually do was become a freelance reporter because that's actually a fantastic way to use the fruit. But even then he did kind of suck at that and he ended up being killed. So good reporting there, invisible man. So look, we should not speak ill of the dead, except in the case of Absalom. Your fruit is now in much better hands. Now, as for someone who still lingers quite gloriously in this world, let's say hello to number nine, Foxy the Silver Fox, a man whose rounded lower half defies the laws of biology and whose devil fruit usage violates the very nature of the word decent. However, as I said in the intro, Foxy does have one thing really going for him being creativity. He actually ended up with a nine. Look at that, a whopping nine for creativity because there are very few people I can think of who are more creative with their powers than Foxy. The problem is he's an idiotic fox with a pointy pinhead who uses his science bending fruit pretty much exclusively to cheat in minor and frivolous games. There is no substance backing Foxy's sheer creativity, and so he finds himself being greatly shamed here today. Moving beyond Fox kind, in number eight, we have Charlotte Opera, a man who is best known as, ah, that guy who was there and did nothing. Now, Opera possesses the Kuri Kuri no Mi, one of the uh, many food-based devil fruits. It's a pretty cool ability, actually, as are all of them. But in a stroke of creamy genius, Opera has decided to make use of this ability primarily to make himself appear as a perpetual jizz monster. He's also very much, you know, on the, the lower end of the intelligence spectrum. And when he does make non-aesthetic use of the Kurikuri no Mi, it is basic, uninspired, and sometimes downright pathetic. Without a doubt, one of the most disappointing Charlotte siblings, as well as worst Devil Free users in the series. To proceed further down the rabbit hole of morbid curiosity, we now land at number seven, where we find Mikita, aka Miss Valentine. And this is another one of those situations where, sure, I do accept that this is a really terrible fruit to have eaten in comparison to almost any other one. There isn't a great deal of innate potential with the Kila Kila no Mi, but even then Mikita doesn't quite receive a pass mark. In fact, the only reason why she gets any points in creativity at all is due to a choice to have a stylish umbrella accessory, but what else is there for her? I mean, she goes up, she goes down, and sometimes she sits on people. So look, she'd probably make a fantastic dominatrix, but less so a great devil fruit user. And achieving a very strikingly exactly similar score, we now have Alvida, user of the Subi Subi no Mi, which certainly does make her the slipperiest, but not the smartest or the most creative or anything really, anything but slippery. Which is pretty wild because in theory, Alvida's devil fruit makes her quite literally invincible because anything and everything will just slip right off. Swords, bullets, fists, there is nothing in this world capable of harming Alvida that does not involve either Haki or Sea Stone. Meaning that her grand failures in the series are strictly her own and the elected usage of the Subi Subi no Mi are far below par in every area imaginable. And I have imagined like four of those areas. Although even Alvida gets some credit when compared to 
to Van de Decken the Ninth. Our fifth place finisher has applied his bizarre Martimartinomi powers for one grand purpose, which is effectively to touch underage mermaid titties. And also, I guess, to destroy all of Fishman Island that one time, which is why he gets a six in usage, because there is <laughs> there's a big gap of variety there. Unfortunately, he's also a bit of an uncreative moron who is so blinded by mermaid curvature that he has failed in quite literally every aspect of his life. And also, a fishman consuming a devil fruit and choosing to live underwater is a terrible, terrible idea. A grand hindrance on Van der Decken's general lifestyle. Not that he probably would have had a great lifestyle to begin with, but this has made it worse. Now, with sea life in mind, let's examine a character who most people just often flat out forget is actually a devil fruit user, Becomes. And I don't blame anyone for that because our fourth place finisher almost never uses his Kamekame no Mi, which allows him to transform into a turtle and turtle mink hybrid. It's only really good to save him from being shot in the back, which it has done on, I suppose, two occasions, but it's really hard to judge a fruit user who actively does not make use of their fruit. However, I suppose it's that lack of fruit use that really does make Becomes a terrible user. It's sort of like me buying a guitar and claiming to be a great guitarist when I've only ever plucked a single string once or twice. I'm not a great guitarist, I am a terrible guitarist and I suck at music in general. And I'm sorry Pecoms, but until proven otherwise, you are the devil fruit user equivalent of my non-existent guitar ability. But at least you're not Mark Weiss. At least we're all not Mark Weiss because he's basically Miss Valentine, but even less of everything. Which is quite fun because both the Kila Kila no Mi and the Ton Ton no Mi made their way to the worst devil fruit list, except in reverse order. The Kila Kila was the worst fruit, yet here Miss Valentine is a better devil fruit user. Quite fascinating really, and most of that has to do with creativity. Mark Weiss has one unit out of 10, one out of 10, because he has never done a single thing that does not involve being Kirby in Super Smash Brothers, just pressing down B over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, that's right, Mark Weiss is that guy. And no, once again, it's not the greatest fruit, it's a terrible fruit, but Mark Weiss is also a terrible human being who also doesn't wear pants, by the way. It's just sort of like a big tank top muumuu that covers his well-rounded physique. Alas, Mark Weiss is not our ultimate loser here today because we still need to examine our silver Shane medal, Kelly Funk. And there's not a whole lot to say about the Jaka Jaka no Mi that I haven't said before. Really, really, oh my God, what a bad fruit. And Kelly Funk does use it reasonably, I suppose, considering having a trusted jacket partner in his brother, Bobby. And I will admit it's hard to rank this one. It's a really difficult fruit to deal with because I see no creativity, little intelligence, and about the same level of mastery that a five-year-old child needs to just dress themselves. It's a bad situation, but I refuse to believe that we've seen the full potential of the Jaka Jaka no Mi under the direction of Mr. Kelly Funk. It has to be able to do better, it just has to. But now it is time to unveil our number one worst Devil Fruit user in the series. Who will it be? Most of the really horrible ones have already been shown. However, there is one key presence currently missing, and that is Orochi. If you've ever asked yourself the question of how one can screw up being a mythical Zoan fruit user, the answer to that question is Orochi. He is blessed with a fruit of untold power, one of the rarest subclasses in this entire world, and he does almost quite literally nothing with it. This is such an egregious offense that I wrote to Oxford, Cambridge, Merriam-Webster, and even the Urban Dictionary, and put forward the suggestion that we officially retire the English word waste and replace it with Orochi. With the example definition being, what an Orochi of a fruit. I have never seen a more thoroughly Orochi devil fruit. All in the hands of that complete Orochi, Orochi. And that is the story of how Orochi became the worst devil fruit user in one piece. But if you'd like to see some higher class characters and I recommend you check out my video of the top 20 best devil fruit users in the series, also very fun. Otherwise, please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join the discussion on my Discord server. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.